As soon as the rear cover is removed, start scanning for oil residue, especially at the tubing joints. Check the areas in the drain pan where defrost water drains. With some evaporator leaks, there can be enough oil to make it to this point. Check around the compressor as well. With the evaporator cover off, visually examine the coil, connections, and drain trough. If there is a partial frost pattern, there should be enough refrigerant to use the electronic leak detector. If not, and there are no access valves, put temporary access on the high side and the low side and attach your gauges. Take pictures with your phone of the operating and static pressures. You will need these if it turns out to be a non-repairable leak. Use the electronic leak detector and gas trap to first check for leaks on all high side connections and components while the compressor is running. Disable the condenser fan when possible to increase the pressure even further. Check the low side connections and components with the compressor off for at least 5 minutes to equalize the system and raise the pressure on the low side. Check all accessible tubing and components. When you find the leak, recover the refrigerant and examine the dryer for contamination. Then continue with repairs. If you are unable to locate the leak, recover the refrigerant, but leave the dryer as is for now and continue with the next steps. The use of dry nitrogen is now approved by Sears Home Services for use in HA refrigeration, repair, and diagnosis. Follow the setup procedure as outlined in the Tech Tools Bulletin TT46-07, then back out the nitrogen regulator adjustment and relieve all pressure from the manifold gauge set by opening all manifold and hose valves. Close the high side hose hand valve and open the low side hose hand valve if not already open. Connect the equipment to the system high side and low side. In this example, temporary access is still connected and open after refrigerant recovery. Leave the manifold gauge set high side valve open but close the manifold gauge set low side valve. Open the nitrogen tank and adjust the regulator screw clockwise to increase the delivery or working pressure up to the low side design or test pressure rating for the model being serviced. Do not exceed this rating. Ensure the nitrogen regulator working pressure gauge reading matches the manifold gauge high side gauge reading as the pressure is being increased to the maximum. Pressurize the system by slowly opening the high side hose hand valve at the access point to the seal system. Note the high side pressure gauge will normally drop some and then recover as the system gradually reaches the regulator's set pressure unless a large leak is present. Listen for any obvious leaks while watching the manifold gauge set low side gauge. The pressure should begin to climb slowly from 0 psi over a few minutes time indicating nitrogen traveling from the system high side to the low side. Note if low side pressure remains at 0, a restriction may be indicated. As the low side pressure reaches the retard area of the manifold gauge set low side gauge, close the low side hose hand valve to prevent high pressure damage to the manifold gauge set low side gauge. The center port valve may be closed and then reopened periodically to check on the progress of pressurizing the system. If the system is not completely charged or has a large leak, the high side gauge pressure will fall while the center port valve is closed. Remember, only pressurize the full system to no higher pressure than the low side design test pressure. If a system leak is audible but inaccessible for repair, the suspected section of the seal system must be isolated. If a leak is not audible when the maximum allowable system pressure has been reached, prepare to search for the leak. Close the manifold center port valve, close the nitrogen cylinder valve, 
and note the pressure shown on the seal system being tested. For a record of this test, attach a piece of paper to the machine compartment with the district and service order number, model and serial number, and the date of service. Take photos of the entire setup that includes the information on the paper, the hoses, connections, and gauge pressures in case it is needed later. Now test each joint and component with approved leak detection solution to locate the leak. Collect any dripping solution and wipe off the tubing afterward. Check the system pressure occasionally and if pressure begins to fall, safely reapply nitrogen pressure following the previous steps, but be sure to close the nitrogen tank valve when your attention is not on the pressure gauges. This is important so there is no possibility of overpressurizing the equipment or seal system components. When the leak is located, do not make repairs with the system pressurized. With the nitrogen tank valve closed, loosen the working pressure hose fitting and place the end into a shop towel to collect any possible oil or debris. Safely vent the remaining nitrogen from the seal system high side and then low side as the pressure falls below the low side gauge retard range. Back the regulator adjustment out in preparation for the next use. Repair any leaks found. Replace all temporary devices with permanent access valves. Replace the filter dryer and then repeat the leak test procedure using nitrogen. After a leak free repair is confirmed, vent the nitrogen pressure as prescribed previously before proceeding with deep evacuation. If the leak is not located on accessible components, isolation of inaccessible seal system components is the next step. These are typically the heat exchanger and the condenser loop. Use SS46-12 to guide you through the procedure of using nitrogen to pressurize and monitor the isolated component. Pulling a deep vacuum on the isolated section is possible, but not as effective, especially on smaller leaks. After you have isolated the inaccessible component and when a non-repairable leak is your diagnosis, contact Stack for a possible repair that you may not be aware of or to provide the necessary photos and procedure steps taken as needed for warranty, third party, or PA coverage. When a leak cannot be located using the electronic leak detector or by isolation of the inaccessible components, a die dryer may be installed on most models. Never install a die dryer on product where the refrigerant system is in direct contact with consumables such as on a freestanding ice maker. Be sure to use a manufacturer's model specific die dryer and be aware that it can take up to 72 hours of operation before the die can be seen using the special lighting glasses. This means a return visit is required. If a die dryer is already on the product from at least three days prior, you can use the glasses and light immediately to help you locate the leak. Please note that the lack of dye on any external components is not accepted as proof of an internal leak. <laughs>